Central Texans follow the case as it was happening in real time, and now the world is learning about Greg Kelly's child sexual abuse trial, false conviction, and exoneration. But the five-part docu-series called Outcry, running right now on Showtime, is not getting rave reviews from everyone. Michael Morton, whose story is featured in the documentary because he was also wrongfully convicted in Williamson County, tells KXAN investigator Aaron Cargile it does not tell the full story. You have a call from an inmate at Williamson County Jail. Whether you're watching live on Sunday nights. We're completely innocent of these accusations. Or you've already streamed the entire documentary online. Outcry is giving viewers a new look into the life of a high school football star turned convicted felon who is now a free man. But very few people know some of the players in this story, like Michael Morton. First and foremost, let me say right out of the shoot, Greg was the subject of a horrid police investigation. I mean, they didn't look at anybody, no one but him. It, it was just, it was hard for you. But Morton, who says he counseled Kelly behind bars to help prepare him for prison, was disappointed was after that. watching a preview of the series before it hit the air. But it wasn't a complete picture, especially the lawyers involved in his case. Morton made his critique clear in a statement on his website and a five-page letter his lawyer sent to Showtime. His main issue? How Kelly's initial defense attorney, Patricia Cummings, who declined to be interviewed for the documentary, was portrayed. Questioning everything I did, um, and I don't know when that's going to stop. Can't what viewers see are clips from this sit-down interview with KXAN after Kelly's trial. She has a 20-plus year record of behaving professionally, ethically, and honestly. She would never hurt a client. Um, that, that's the only reason I stepped forward, because I saw what they were doing to somebody I really care about. Morton and Cummings are close friends. She helped free him after 25 years in prison. But in Kelly's case, his appeals lawyer, Keith Hampton, accused Cummings of being ineffective by failing to look into one of the alternate suspects, Jonathan McCarty, due to a conflict of interest because she's represented McCarty's family before. The district court judge who recommended to the Court of Criminal Appeals Kelly's conviction be overturned agreed. The district court judge found her to be ineffective on, ineffective on two counts, and that's a fact. And us reporting the facts of the case and a defense claim in real time, like we're being attacked for it in a way that is very bizarre. But Morton says the higher court yeah, did not I'm, side I'm with that part of her ruling yeah, and points to an opinion from one of nine Court of Criminal Appeals judges, Judge David Newell. In fact, David Newell said that none of that was true. All of it was completely wrong, false. I mean, read it yourself. You don't have to just believe some talking head on TV. The only thing the court really addressed was Greg's actual innocence. Outcry's director, so, Pat Candelis, says only two of the so nine CCA say, judges but, made a call about Cummings at all. So you cannot claim that they cleared her. They didn't. Two out of nine is not a majority. The others didn't give an opinion. So if you're not going to disturb the lower court's findings, those findings are she was ineffective on two counts. Morton also says since the film uses his story to show injustice in the district attorney's office and how his exoneration led to new leadership, viewers should also know current DA Sean Dick has hired back two prosecutors involved in Morton's case, including first assistant DA Lindsay Roberts. Mr. Roberts actually argued against me getting out after, not before, after the DNA evidence had cleared me and identified the real perpetrator. What Morton says the documentary does well points out the very flawed police investigation. I know when they only look at one person and nobody else, you get this kind of disaster. Candelis lives in Williamson County and says he was always a strong supporter of Morton's innocence. You know that you're not going to please everybody when you do something, and, and I'm not expecting that. What I take issue with is people that are saying, uh, making claims that what we did was inaccurate. It's upsetting to, to get this from Michael Morton, and I think it's, it's also clear to me that I think he's being used as a, as a shield for Patricia Cummings and the Innocence Project because of the status and stature of Michael Morton, and I think that's unfortunate. Aaron Cargill, KXAN, investigates.
Now, the director says he tried to call Morton multiple times to ask him to be part of the documentary and says those calls were never returned. Morton says the director nor Showtime ever reached out. Aaron reached out to DA Sean Dick and his first assistant, Lindsay Roberts. You can read their statements online right now with this story at KXAN.com. She also reached out to Patricia Cummings. Her lawyer sent a lengthy response saying that they will, quote, exhaust all legal avenues to right this wrong and restore her good name and reputation. All parties who had a hand in concocting these awful lies about Patricia Cummings will be held accountable in a court of law. The depiction of Patricia Cummings in outcry is a misguided attempt to malign an outstanding, honorable, and nationally renowned attorney. In a malicious effort to manufacture a TV villain, certain individuals involved in making and participating in the film not only played fast and loose with the truth, they told outright lies about Ms. Cummings. Her attorney said says those lies include false claims that she deliberately did not investigate Jonathan McCarty due to an alleged conflict of interest. He said not a single appeals court judge found she was unethical or ineffective, and one of their opinions said Cummings interviewed McCarty three times and many other witnesses to gather more information about him. Cummings' attorney also said Greg Kelly was exonerated because the court found, quote, newly discovered evidence of his innocence, which was not available when he was put on trial.